whether you're setting out for a weekend of camping or a seasonal RV trip, the considerations for keeping connected are different than full timers. Now, most of our content here at the Mobile Intent Resource Center is focused on people who are traveling long term, whether full time or spending the bulk of the year in an RV or on a boat. But for some people who are traveling just for a, a short trip, a weekend, a week, a summer vacation, or a big seasonal trip, well, the connectivity changes completely. And some of the answers actually might be right in your pocket, the best ways to stay connected. So if you're not setting up for long-term extended RVing or, or even boating travels, you're going to want to probably not invest a whole bunch in gear and data plans that you have to maintain every month. So the key to setting up for shorter term travels is utilizing the options that you already have without increasing your costs too much. Now, first of all, let's talk about campground Wi-Fi. If you're getting going to a campground, a commercial RV park, or even some public campgrounds have Wi-Fi networks, these options may actually work well for you. Just have realistic expectations. Yeah, you might not, particularly without extra gear, be able to do much with the campground Wi-Fi inside your RV. But if you only need to get online for a little bit each day to do a little bit of work or check email or do some traveling, uh, travel planning, you can go up to the office or the rec center or wherever the Wi-Fi is set, out, set up and do your work there and not need to invest in any extra gear at all. But if you are finding you really do want that experience back at your RV, there is Wi-Fi extending gear that you can put on your RV that helps you extend that signal a little bit and maybe increase things. Just don't plan to be able to do streaming video, video conference calls, or other high bandwidth things over a public resource like campground Wi-Fi. They're generally just not set up for that. Now the way most people will stay connected is by using your cellular data plans. And the plans you have for your phones already might include some personal hotspot data that you can use to get your laptops and other devices online, but it probably doesn't include a lot of data. So you're going to have to be very careful and ration it out, which if you only need a weekend's worth of data, might not be a big deal. Now, if you're setting up for a longer term trip, that might be a big deal. But first of all, check to see what your data plan supports. And if it doesn't support personal mobile hotspot, you might want to switch plans so that you have that feature. And there are a lot of plans out there that include personal mobile hotspot. It's now kind of the norm in most cellular data plans out there. But you're gonna find caps somewhere in the 10 to 30 gigabyte range of how much you get at high speed. And there are some plans out there that have more of it, but you're just gonna to have to go and look at what the current top pick plans are out there. And that makes it super simple. It's just a matter of pressing a switch on your phone and your phone is making a Wi-Fi hotspot for your other devices. So simple, easy, and you probably already are equipped to do it. Now, a lot of data plans also allow you to add on a cellular enabled tablet to your plan for pretty cheap, maybe 10 or 20 bucks a month. And if that's an unlimited data plan, there is a heck of a lot that you can do on a tablet. Yeah, bigger screen for doing work, bigger screen for entertainment, and not a lot of extra cost, and you can always deactivate that add-on when you no longer need it. So having a cellular-enabled tablet is sometimes worthwhile to pay extra for up front to have a cellular-capable tablet so that when you do take these sort of trips, you have that ability to activate the connectivity you need. Now, entertainment. Of course, RVing, you should be out, you know, they tell you hiking and campground. Having camp fun in and nature. Ha and, and campfires <laughs> and s'mores and things like that. But you know, sometimes you do just want to keep up with your shows and things like that and watch some entertainment. And there's some easy ways you can do that without having to rely on uh, campground bandwidth. And if you have one of those unlimited data plans on a tablet or a smartphone, you can screencast to a larger screen. Yeah, watching on a four inch screen yeah, might be okay for a little bit, but you still want to get a bigger screen fix and you don't want to have some of these more uh, exotic data plans. Use the video, you watch the video on your small screen and then use a, an adapter to do HDMI out to the bigger screen in your RV and enjoy it that way. Or just enjoy watching on your smartphone or tablet. Now, if your needs are a little more demanding and a personal hotspot off of your smartphone isn't going to work for you, then look at some of the prepaid flexible options at the carrier's options for mobile hotspot data. Right now, they're going to come with capped data plans. They can get pricey, but for short term, that might be workable so you can get high speed mobile hotspot use. Now, that way you're not tied into something that has got ongoing annual expenses, but you can just like, you know, maybe potentially activate a prepaid plan on a hotspot, use that for your two month trip, and you're done.
or if you have a whole bunch of data you need for a weekend. That, <laughs> that cat might be just suitable for that shorter trip. Now, signal enhancing, you're getting into antennas and cellular boosters. These are gonna up your costs, up your complexity, and up the amount of research you're going to have to do in advance of your trip. So if you're going out way into the boonies, that's gonna be a consideration for you. You're gonna to need to balance the amount of complexity you put into your system versus how much you're willing to spend on it versus your needs on this vacation trip. Yeah, because if you are on just a, a once a year trip or twice a year trip, it might not be worth all that expense when you could potentially just spend an afternoon touring a town and then spend your afternoon working in a brewery with free Wi-Fi. You know, take advantage of the local resources rather than pay to have them all embedded into your RV. Okay, now if you are setting out for longer travels, travels that are probably measured in months instead of weeks, and especially if you have high demanding needs, you need the words reliability and lots of fast data, if that's you working remotely homeschooling, you honestly are coming into one of the more complex setups that we help our members navigate. As you know, you've got a balance between embracing the full-time lifestyle and putting buying gear that would be suitable for year-round use and all that expense and then finding the plans that would be suitable for year-round use versus, well, you're only going to be out for three months perhaps. Maybe you don't want to spend that much money. Maybe you want to have something that you could turn on and off it gets tricky to decide where that balance is going to work for you. Now, of course, a lot of our resources on the Resource Center are dedicated to these sorts of topics, so we have a lot of content on this. But what you need to really consider is that balance for you. What are your needs? What is critical? How much is it worth to you, both in your ramp up, your installation, your gear costs, and the data plans that you're going to keep around so that you can have that connectivity for those few months out of the year. Now, some people, they will go and devise a setup that they use both at their stationary home and on the road that is mobile so that they are using it year round. So that is one solution. They're basically taking a full timer approach and then just treating their house, cutting the cord and using their mobile internet at their residential address when they're not traveling. But if you have a really good home internet solution and you're just looking for mobile, you just want the mobile options on there, you're going to need to consider, can you utilize campground Wi-Fi in your travels? Is that going to be suitable enough for your other public Wi-Fi solutions? An important consideration is uh, when you're looking at cellulars, do you want to have multiple cellular carriers on board so you've got redundancy, not just one carrier in a family plan, but maybe AT&T and Verizon and maybe even also T-Mobile all on board. And how much data do you keep in each of these plans? And of course, you want to avoid contracts so you can turn them on and off. And some plans may have activation fees every time you turn them back on. So keep that stuff all in mind. And then also very important, a lot of the best plans out there are finding ways to tap into some of these uh, legacy grandfather plans that once you get them, well, you don't want to let them go because you can't reactivate them again. So is it worth the expense of keeping a plan active even if you're not using it when you're back at your stationary home? And then, of course, each time you set out for one of these extended trips, these options change so often that the current best options or the option you used last trip may not be around anymore. So you're going to have to re-research what are the current best options every single time, not just for your data plans. Those change often enough on their own, but the gear that you have selected in your RV, especially when it comes to the cellular modems that you're using, those may need updating like every two years is what we advise for most of our full-timer customers. You may now need to replace your gear more often if you want to keep the best current options for reliability on the road. So oh, it's complicated. Dive into our resources. We've got a lot of information to help you out. And, it, well, it can be done. You'll have a great trip. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.